All right, so once you open InDesign, you can go ahead and click on New File. You're going to get a menu that opens up that looks similar to uh, some of the what we've seen before in Photoshop and Illustrator. Things will be a little bit different though. There's some other options and other terms that um, you might see. So we're going to, again, we're starting off by titling it Project 7, your name. It might be, right now mine was automatically set up to have units as uh, PICAs. Um, this is a, a, a printing uh, unit and term. We're just going to change it to um, inches for now, I think is the easiest option. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use that, that T menu as an example. So I actually am going to change the dimensions here to be a lot more uh, vertical than horizontal. So right now, the width and height, it's at a letterhead size, 8.5 by 11. I'm just going to kind of um, you know, eyeball it. I'm going to say width is 6 and height is 17. You know, I haven't measured that menu, so this might be a little bit off, but that's okay. You, your uh, margins, bleed settings are probably all going to look similar to mine if it's uh, the system default. Um, you can leave all of that as is. Uh, make sure for pages, you just have one page. So InDesign is what you know, people use for uh, basically everything print. Um, magazines, books, cards, uh, letters, you name it. Uh, things that go out in the mail, anything that's printed is probably made in InDesign. Uh, there's a few other programs that people use, but um, InDesign is the Adobe software that is kind of industry standard. Uh, so that's why you have, you'll see under the menu options, you'll see something like uh, how many pages um, and do you want facing pages. This is because it's already kind of tailored to asking, you know, are you making a book or something like that. Um, but in this case, we're just having a single page menu. So we just have uh, one page. It doesn't matter if facing page is turned on because that doesn't apply to us. All the other options can stay the same. Anybody have any questions? Everything look okay on your screen? All right, you can press create. All right, so just by uh, me eyeballing with my six inches wide by 17 inches tall, uh, this is probably a little bit more vertical than the menu, but it's all right, we can work with it. So again, you're gonna start noticing a lot of um, similar windows, uh, tools that we've seen in Illustrator and Photoshop. Um, you can click on, I would recommend clicking on uh, the workspace here and clicking on Essentials. Actually, I usually use Essentials Classic, I forget. Um, it's okay if you use Essentials. Uh, I usually like using Essentials Classic just because that's this is kind of how it has looked for uh, 10, 15, 20 years. And so it, it makes more sense to my eyes to see it uh, the classic way. Um, but you're going to notice, okay, we have selection tools, we have pin tools, we have uh, cropping, boxes, um, text tools over on the, the left. Some of my windows that are open right now on the right include the align tool, which we're familiar with. Um, but And then the links tab here works the same way as sorry, not links, um, layers tab here works the same way as layers in Photoshop and Illustrator. Something that is different that uh, is used quite a lot in InDesign is the pages tab. This obviously is going to be used a lot more if you're making something like a magaz magazine that uses uh, a lot of pages. This is how you kind of go back and forth between <coughs> different pages and start seeing the layout. Again, we don't need this uh, at the moment because we're just using one. So I'm just going to have it selected on the layers 
uh, tab. And then we also see um, this box that's set up um, with <clears throat> half inch margins. Um, I can turn it off and on. This is not actually printed. It just kind of shows you um, kind of like a safe area that you've set up. You want to have your designs um, within this box. You really don't want to be designing right to the edge for a couple of reasons. First off, it usually doesn't look good unless it's a specific um, kind of style. I'm thinking, for example, like this one where you have this yellow um, kind of bleeding off the edge of the, the letters here. Um, but for non-industrial printing, like printing on, uh, let's say, an inkjet printer that you might have at home, the printer can't actually print right to the edge of the paper. Uh, so if you see something like a menu or um, magazine or something that has images or uh, text or design elements that have color or ink that's printed all the way to the very edge, what's happened there is the paper was larger, the image, the graphics get printed over the edge, the page gets printed, and then it gets trimmed down. They actually cut it, and they, they'll do this in industrial processes. That's how they'll have uh, pages that have photography or something that goes right to the edge of the, the page. The printer is not actually putting ink down perfectly at the edge. It's putting ink down over the edge and then getting trimmed off, okay? Just a little tidbit there that also probably does not apply to this project. All right, so the basic process that we're going to start using, um, you're gonna, again, you're going to be using your, your layers tab, having different uh, text blocks on different layers. But it's, again, it's pretty straightforward. We have the type tool over here on the left. It's also keyboard shortcut T. I'm going to click on the type tool. And then you know, I'm zooming in. Um, you can also zoom in with your command plus or minus. I can do it on my uh, touchpad here, but command plus or minus is how you do it with the keyboard. And so I'm going over, actually probably the, the best way that you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna save uh, the image of the menu, and then find the file on Finder. So I'm gonna go, let's find the T. And then you can uh, click and drag it from Finder onto your InDesign page. All right, so when I click and drag, it brings up, um, I get this little uh, cursor with a, a little icon of the image. So I can actually click and drag the size of it. So if I click and drag, it's um, showing me the size of the box that will control the size of the image that I place. So if I let go, then it made the image that size that I uh, put it at. Now, I can also um, not choose a size. So if I click and drag it over, and then I just click once. So I'm not dragging, I'm just clicking once. It will place the image at full size. Now, obviously, this is too big. Um, so that's why it can be helpful to click, drag, and then Again, click and drag so I can make the T image, let's say, fit a little bit better right here. So I'm going to move it over to the side. And uh, if you make it too small, you'll notice if, you, if you're on your selection tool and you click over on one of the corners, you think, oh, I'm going to click and drag, I'll make it, I'm going to make it bigger. So let's see what happens when I do that. When I click and drag over, I let go, nothing happened. I just have this larger uh, kind of bounding box. Why did it do that differently? So actually, you can use this as a technique for 
cropping images. Uh, I'll actually do that um, because we have this T menu on a kind of marble background. So if I make the box, the edges the opposite way, I'm making it smaller, I'll bring it in right to the edge. It's cropping it down. So these are just the, the basically the viewing area, okay? Now I can move this around. Um, if I hover over it, you'll see this little circle in the center. You can click and drag that and it will drag that image around inside that cropping area. So I'll put it back about right there. So if you want to actually make it larger or smaller, um, you're going to click on the free transform tool. So it looks like the arrow with a little box over here. It's also keyboard shortcut E. So if I'm on the free transform tool, then I can click on the corner. And now notice as I scale it, for InDesign, it's not scaling it proportionally. So I, for InDesign, you have to hold down shift and then drag it to make it bigger so that it keeps the proper dimensions, okay? So that's how you uh, resize it, okay? Any questions so far? All right, so I can click back on the selection tool. Again, I can move this around. So it's just an easy way to have this um, side by side so you can start moving the text over. All right, so on, we're just I'm only using layer one right now. I'm going to go back to my uh, type tool again, keyboard shortcut T, click on type tool, and then I can, just like the other programs, click and drag, make a text box of a certain size. Here, I can type in T, and then if I, so I have the text box here. If I'm on my uh, selection tool, I can double click on it and it will uh, put the cursor in here. I can edit it, I keep typing, move it around. Or you can just, again, have your type tool and then click once in there. You can select, I'm clicking and dragging, selecting the word, the letters I just typed. And then on, with my view that I have up here, it may be different for yours depending on what um, workspace you're using. But this is where it shows uh, the typeface, the name of the typeface, um, the typeface style, and then things, all your different options, um, like your, the, the size, uh, kerning options, spacing options, alignment options, that I have all up here. So I can, Make this bigger. I can also type in a size. Let's make it 50. And we'll keep going up. Uh, I'm going to change the typeface to have it be a little bit more. Uh, let's see. We're going to use. I'm going to use uh, one of my favorite typefaces, uh, Source Sans Pro. It's just a good, solid, sans serif typeface. But I'll make it a little bolder. I'll make it a lot bolder just for the sake of having it be a little different. Maybe not so much. And uh, that is how you get, you get your type over onto your page. Um, you can go ahead and start doing the same process with all of these, which is, you know, just, it'll be a little bit tedious, but this is uh, part of being a designer and learning some of these processes. Anytime we're working with a lot of text, it just takes a little time. It won't take too much time though. So, you know, as you start 
Uh, you don't have to make a text box for every single word, by the way. Okay, so let me show you. I'm gonna make a new text box just for, um, let's say I'll make one. This one is arranged very vertically, so I have, they have this kind of uh, numbering system, and unless this is a weird way they're showing their prices, which I don't think makes sense. So it looks like they have some sort of numbering system for the T's. Um, I, don't, I don't know what that means. Why do these T's have numbers? But okay, we're gonna copy it anyway. So I'm going to make a text box just for all these numbers. So it's gonna be a very vertical text box that has, just has the three digits on each one. So I can click and drag it like so. Um, I'm just gonna put in some options. And so all of these elements are in the one text box that I just, I would press the enter or return button and just, you know, space it down. Um, and then you can move all of these together. Um, you can also move it around with your arrows on your keyboard to kind of fine tune where it gets placed. And so you don't have to make a text box for every single uh, number. This also, if you're wanting to adjust it, let's say you want to move a little right, then you don't have to move every single number, you just move this one text box. You may also, um, I would do the same thing with uh, the menu options over here. However, you may notice something like the, um, it's actually probably the same, but let's say the, uh, the name of the T is a different typeface, or it's, let's say it's bold, and then the description, black tea with bergamot oil, um, is a different typeface. You also don't have to make new text boxes for um, the different styles that you're using. So let's say if I do um, the Earl Gray, and then underneath, Black tea with bergamot oil. I can just select each one individually, change typeface. Let's do, I'm going to do the uh, source sans bold here. And then this one, I'll do. light, but also maybe I'll do a uh, light italic. So I'm selecting it just by, you know, clicking and dragging over the text and then changing the, um, the typeface options uh, one at a time. So that's how with the same text box, you can have two different um, uh, styles for the text. Yeah, question? So maybe, I'm not sure what happened there, but yeah, um, maybe it might have been weird layers, but um, so yeah, and type tool and you just click and drag. You can, well, you can also, I think, just click once and then start typing, maybe that's what you did. Yeah, I think okay. I did wrong. Yeah, I mean, it's not necessarily wrong, um, it's just, I think it's a little more visually intuitive to kind of see the text boxes and kind of see how they're being laid out and um, where everything is kind of organized. So, you know, the way you did it, if you just clicked once and then started typing, it's not necessarily wrong. It's just, um, I think this is a better way for uh, learning the program. All right, any other questions? Yeah. Just a quick clarification. So it's two font families, not two font 
Yeah, yes, two typefaces. Yeah, um, I should have, if I wrote fonts, I should have said typefaces. Um, let me, what, what did I say here? I probably did say fonts. Um, when exactly, uh, yes, that is my mistake. Let me actually change that real quick. So, um, no, you can, it's two, two different typefaces. You can use as many different, uh, so basically like typeface is the, the family, like let's say a Source Hands Pro um, is like the typeface and then bold, italic, light, uh, black, medium, all those different options are different you know, fonts within the typeface family. So you can use as many of those as you want, so, but you're using um, two typefaces. And then like so, you can use as many bold or light, extra light as you want, but only two typefaces. So I'm gonna change that terminology. That was a quickly written mistake on my part. Okay, uh, also need to back up and do Adobe fonts. So I think we briefly looked at this on one of the um, earlier projects. Um, if you click on your Creative Cloud icon at the top, and then you can see this little italic F, uh, click on that and it'll show you um, the, your active fonts. So it's this little, uh, little italic F at the top of your Creative Cloud menu. You can also click on Browse More Fonts. So if you click on that, it's gonna open up Adobe Fonts. Um, oh, that's right, we, we looked at it with um, the minimal movie poster because uh, we were putting in the Maze Runner title. So um, this is where you can choose two different typefaces. So for example, on this one, um, I'm not entirely sure how you pronounce it, Dapifer maybe, you'll see this is the typeface. Dapifer is the typeface and then um, is, it will show, it says 18 fonts. So if you click on Dapifer, you will see what it means by 18 fonts. You have Dapifer light, light italic, book, book italic, blah, 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 all the way down. Uh, stencil, medium, stencil, bold, stencil, black. So this is, you can see a stencil version of this typeface. It looks a little different. So you will use two typefaces, but you can use as many of these these are the fonts within that typeface. You can use as many of these as you want, bold, italic, book, all that kind of stuff. It's just you have to use two typefaces. So if you like this one, you would use Dapifer and then let's say um, Lust script. So then this is a, a second typeface. This one only has three fonts within it, uh, regular, display, and fine. So you could use all three of these if you wish. Um, but if you chose these two, Dapifer and Lust, those would be um, your two typefaces that you use, okay? A any questions about that? Does that make sense? All right. And then um, for Adobe Fonts, if you click on it, <clears throat> um, and then over here where it says Activate Fonts, I can click on it. Um, it gives me, because we have Dapifer and Dapifer Stencil, um, I can activate one or both. If I click on it, let me actually do one. No, that's fine, I'll just activate it. Um, so if I click on this little button, a little uh, option turns on, it'll take a little bit of time, and now it gives me a notification you've activated 12 fonts for that for. I think, I think we were having this problem before, um, if you have InDesign open already, let me just double check actually. I don't think it'll show up. No, so um, you would have to close, quit InDesign completely, then reopen it after you install the Adobe fonts. Um, then it should, let me just make sure I'm telling you the right thing. Then it should be active. Yeah. Just in case people are going to get started messing with fonts, I would suggest 
saving things as a, um, you can actually character style, because it'll be a lot easier to change all the top level. True, although I, I'm not going to show that. Uh, since you, you put that out there, it is definitely possible. Um, but I don't mind people having to do it the hard way. If you already know it, you absolutely can use it. Um, but given that um, we're just it's an exercise, so if they have to do it uh, every single time, I'm okay with that. But um, that, that's a little uh, a little hint. If any, of, if any of you were listening, there is easier ways that could save you time. But I'm purposely um, leaving that out for now. <laughs> All right, uh, so I'm just going to save this. So I'm quitting InDesign. It's going to ask me to save this project. Um, and I'm going to go through, make a new folder, project files, save. I'm going to open it again, and it should have that Dapifer typeface activated. Yeah, so now it's in there. Now I could change. Um, let's do for bold. And now I have that option. Okay. Any questions? All right. Uh, lastly, if you do decide you want to, um, you're going to put in some of the like lines or squares or something. It works very similar to Illustrator. Over here, we have a line tool. So we have these little lines um, under, beside this uh, rotated text here. Uh, so I can click on the line tool, click and drag. Now, if I am just clicking and dragging around, I could accidentally make it um, a little bit at an angle. You don't want to eyeball it because you can be a little bit off. Even if this looks straight, it may be a bit off. So what you're going to do is um, hold down shift. It's going to snap into place. So now I have a perfectly vertical line. Or if I bring it over, it will be either like 45 degree angles or 90, de 90 degree angles. So in this case, I'm holding down shift. I just made this little line here. Um, you can. On my options, what I see here, I can change the width of it um, above. Okay. Uh, and you can rotate the text similar way as uh, the other programs. If you hover your cursor over the corner um, and Move it around, it'll give you the rotate option. You can hold down shift, it'll also rotate it in 45 degree angles. And so I know I'm just doing the title, but like for where it says, you know, like the green and black T's here, I can uh, rotate it over, place it, and then resize it down if that's what I wanted. Okay? So those are the basics. That's what we're going to be working with um, and making a, a simple menu. Okay, any questions? Okay. You are also welcome. Um, I, I Actually, it's not so much of a hint because I think in that demo I posted on the, the Canvas page, I think it, it talks about it. But um, you would just have to watch that demo to find out. So there's, other, there's a million and one YouTube tutorials about basics. Uh, feel free to um, go above and beyond if you want to, but this is the basics. These are the basics that you can start using um, for getting the text down, getting the, the objects. Uh, also, let me just show you. Under here, there's a rectangle tool. If I hover over it, I can also make ellipses. Um, so, rectangle tool, click and drag, works the same way. Right now, it's um, the outline showing it's black. I can change the color. I can also make it fill color if I wanted. But let's, you know, don't overcomplicate things. Keep it uh, true to the design, the layout, 
the reason why we're The reason why we are sticking close to uh, the design of the menus that are posted is because a lot of these show simple, elegant, beautiful ways of typesetting that um, use design principles that are kind of uh, beyond the scope of this class. Uh, the things we've maybe talked about a little bit with the minimalist poster, like hierarchy, you know, the way things are organized with different sizes of, of text um, and the way it's, it leads our eye around the page. Uh, let me go to some of the other options. You know, so, you know, a good example, we have the largest thing is the name of the restaurant and then uh, the title, breakfast, lunch, beverages, and then smaller is uh, the individual options. So this is the hierarchy, one, two, three. Um, the name, titles, and menu options, okay? Same for here. We have kind of a design element, food, okay? It's actually, that's completely unnecessary. We don't need to know that this is food. We know it's food, but this is um, a part of uh, adding visual interest uh, to our project. And then likewise, um, little biscuits. Then that is a, the second biggest uh, typeface. Then they actually have um, the descriptions like fried cucumber and soy, smaller around it. And a different typeface is the, uh, the price on the right hand side, okay? So these are some uh, design principles that you would be exercising more if you went into beginning graphic design um, that we're kind of um, unconsciously learning and figuring out through copying other really beautiful examples. Okay? Yeah? The images and on the Canvas site, you can actually copy paste from the image, the raw text. Safari renders the website. Are you serious? Yeah. Okay, I did not know that. So <laughs> just Safari, not Chrome or I Firefox or anything. Chrome doesn't do it as well, which is surprising. But um, Safari actually, you can click on the text elements and copy them from the. So I don't use Safari, so that's why, wow. That's, uh, well, that's definitely a hack. <laughs> yeah, I haven't, I've used it on a Chrome browser, but um, I, I know that Google Plus, like those are rendered in such a way that it's Safari-based. Yeah. 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 It may not be perfect, because they are True, yeah. But I've been working on it. I've captured the scroll. All right, so. Um, Allah is telling us that, yeah. Yeah, I saw that. Wow. Okay. <laughs> I did not know Safari would do that. So is that? I mean, it's, it's working the same way, right? Wow. All right. Well, that's. Uh, a time saver or a little hack that I'm actually curious if it, if it does it in Chrome. No. Not all of them. It, it really depends on how these images are created and saved, but um, I think, I think uh, uh. the DMD, the one on the texture paper is like just I was like, nope, did not touch it. So I have no good rendering. So it, it does it in Safari, but not Chrome. Huh. Yeah, right. Okay. Okay, I have I've never done that. 
So I, I'm gonna add that to my arsenal. If I ever need to copy text from a JPEG, I'm gonna go to Safari now. All right, good to know. Okay, any other questions? All right, yeah. Um, good question. No, you are not trying to match the typefaces, okay? You, that is the, one of the few kind of creative choices you have. Um, you could take something like, um, like this one, which is kind of like a rustic, you know, big, bold text. You could turn this into like a scripty font that becomes more almost like something that's associated with like a, 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 a tea party or something. You can translate it accordingly. Yeah. Yes. Um, yes, yeah, you're going to include that. I would also, you would include the K, but you don't have to, like, it doesn't have to look like this. You could just do any other K. Yeah. Okay. Anything else? Yes. <laughs> Okay, yeah, 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 um, good question. So the, uh, I think that the fastest way that we're gonna do it here is just you would have it on its own layer. So I would make uh, a new layer. Um, I'm actually gonna just use this little ob object here. Um, and then I'm just pasting that on layer two. Layer two is going to go below. And then I'm just going to resize this. Do that. And then I would lock that layer. Um, so you have a color in the background. Um, and make sure you lock it because otherwise you start clicking around, it, it's going to move it around. Um, yeah. Yep. Okay. Anything else?